<laughs> Alrighty, welcome back to the shop. Today I have another tool review for y'all on this microscope from Vever. They contacted me via email asking if I wanted to review one of their products and when looking through their site, this microscope caught my eye. Right now, I use a cheap digital microscope when attempting a Kyle Royer style guard fit on my hidden tang knives. This fitting style is a tedious procedure in which the maker removes material from the guard in order to recess the ricasso into the guard, thus preventing any gapping. You can also see me use this digital microscope and rotary burr in my recent fantasy knife build where I did the reverse of the Kyle Royer guard fit and actually removed material from the ricasso in order to fit my blades into the center hub. While I got the job done, the picture clarity on the screen isn't terribly sharp, which is critical for seeing what you're doing on this tiny scale. For this fact, as well as my desire to eventually do some precious metal inlay, this more professional grade microscope really intrigued me. I'm going to start off this review by getting the microscope set up, giving some dimensions on the overall assembly, and then testing it out on a guard. So let's get going. First of all, the microscope was bigger than I expected, which is a good thing. A robust arm with stiff springs goes a long way to keep everything rigid and free of shaking when in use. The arm assembly can slide up and down the support post, which in combination with the extension arms gives the user a good deal of adjustment options. There were screws and bolts included with the kit to affix the base plate to your work surface. I decided to screw it to my wooden hand sanding bench since this is where I currently do my engraving. In the future, I'd like to set up a dedicated engraving station for sure. Once the support post is mounted, I slide the arm assembly onto it. I then set the slide lock at its max height location. The next step is to attach the bracket that actually holds the microscope to the arm. This bracket has a ball clamp on it so that you can swivel the microscope around when it's loose. I've found that this gives me a good deal of adjustment when getting the scope in focus. With the bracket installed, you can then place the microscope in the bracket and tighten the set screw to hold it in there. The last things to do are to install the eyepieces and the magnifier on the bottom of the scope. These eyepieces have small set screws on them and the magnifier is threaded. Be careful not to cross thread the magnifier during installation. As an initial test, you can see the magnification achieved on the tip of this pencil. Note I have some better shots of the scope's performance later in the video. Before we can start working on the guard, I need to set up my little vise. I purchased this guy specifically for this purpose and decided to mount it to my hand sanding table. I mounted it low so that I can get the microscope in focus easily. The cool thing about this vise is that I can rotate in just about any direction and it's built out of robust enough materials to get a firm grip on the workpiece. As a side note, they also make some brass jaws for this vise that I later purchased. If you're interested in this vise or the microscope, I'll be putting affiliate product links in the description below. My first impression after getting this dialed in to start working on this guard is that the picture quality is way clearer when you're dialed in on these eyepieces. You have a, a much larger field of view, it feels like, and uh, it's kind of like putting blinders on. You can see kind of what you're doing uh, to a higher detail. One issue I had with the cheap microscope is that there was a lot of vibration and the little screen was moving around a lot whenever I was trying to use it to uh, to to engrave away a little bit of the guards so you know I think that could have been fixed if I had a better mount for the smaller cheaper microscope but I don't know if the 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 picture quality would ever be as good as a higher quality microscope like this one obviously I do think that I'll still use the smaller microscope if this all works out and this is the go-to. I think I'll still use the smaller microscope as a filming option just because it did record, which was a really nice feature of the cheap little microscope. So it can kind of be my camera whenever I'm doing engraving work and then I can just focus on using the main microscope for actually seeing what I'm doing. So with that, I'm gonna start working on this guard. I'll try to get some good shots of the guard itself and. We'll see how this thing does. As I mentioned before, this guard fitting method requires the maker to remove material on the guard so that the ricasso of the knife will actually inset into the guard. It's a tedious method for sure, but the results are generally pretty good. 
I'll hammer the guard onto the Ricasso to form an indentation and then remove material with a very small carbide rotary burr. I'm using a round ball burr that is 0.5 millimeters from Lasco. After a few hours of going back and forth, you can get a pretty darn good fit using this method. So I'm working on the guard here. I'm going to try to get a good shot through the eyepiece. This seems to be a little easier to do with my cell phone than with the DSLR. So there we go. That's the, that's the best shot I can get in there. You can see how nice and crisp the image is and also how large it zooms in to your working area. This is probably about the max zoom that you can get with this thing. All right, so all in all, this thing is pretty darn cool and I feel good recommending it to anyone looking to do engraving. I'm sure it would also do a great job with precious metal inlay. Since that work is on the same scale I'm working in with this guard. From what I can tell, it's the cheapest microscope in this quality level category. And if you're interested in picking one up, I'll put affiliate links in the description of this video. As always, I hope this review was helpful to someone and I'll catch y'all on the flip side.